This project sees me back in Slovenia at Baros Records and reunited with the great engineer and producer Uros Baric. This is an album that probably has been 10 or 15 years in the making and it's a real privilege to get the chance to make it after other recordings of standard guitar repertoire and music by Johann Sebastian Bach and Leo Brouwer and then a collection of French music before this one. I finally get the chance to play music which is from my home country and also the great neighbour of Scotland, Ireland. So the, the recording is full of Scottish and Irish music, Celtic music, um, music that I've taken throughout my career to different countries that I've played and it's been a great way of taking a little bit of my my country and my homeland with me and also a really direct way of expressing myself with the audiences that, that I've met and the new people that, I, that I've come to meet throughout my career. On this first volume of Celtic Collection I've chosen to feature many of the, the world's most great guitarists and their attraction to Celtic music. It just shows you how popular uh, Celtic music is, that guitarists like David Russell, Scott Tennant, even the great uh, composer Toru Takamitsu, they've all actually arranged Celtic music for the classical guitar. So on the recording there are many of, of David Russell's uh, great arrangements. There's um, his very virtuosic um, arrangements, the Spatter the Dew and uh, the Bucks of Oran Moor. And these are, these are great uh, traditional Irish tunes. Um, but what David does is he, he writes these almost like classical um, virtuosic passages uh, within them. The most boring part of any guitarist's life, filing your nails. Californian guitarist Scott Tennant also features on the recording through his arrangement of the beautiful song Wild Mountain Time. This is a, a gorgeous ballad. Many, uh, many of you will know the melody. It's, it's incredibly famous and it has words, um, a great cho chorus um, in which the, the, the words are Will you go, lassie, go? Which is uh, a nice bit of Scots in there. Lassie meaning girl, so will you go, lassie, go? Um, and Scott put this really poignant, beautiful um, arrangement together many years ago and I've, I've played it my concert programs for years so again it's a great chance to record that arrangement. Gerald Garcia, the, the fantastic conductor, arranger, composer, man of many, many trades. And he has two arrangements featured on, on Chaotic Collection. He has the first, uh, My Gentle Harp, uh, in which the guitar is sort of provoking you to think of the sound of a harp. It's, it's beautiful, full of harmonics and, and very delicate piece, really, really gorgeous. Transcription certainly for guitar, uh, but a really famous Irish tune, The Lark in the Clear Air. What Gerald did there is, is really interesting. It's treated a little bit more like a hymn or even a chorale, and it has this kind of baroque style to it. Um, and I was drawn immediately to the, 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 this arrangement, although it's, it's actually very hard on guitar uh, to sustain so many voices at the same time and so much counterpoint, but it's, uh, it's well worth the challenge because it, it, it's just a fantastic piece uh, to get the chance to record on the album.
there is some original uh, music on the, the album in terms of uh, pieces that have been recorded for the first time um, and that music falls to the Scottish composer uh, and guitarist Peter Stewart um, who, who's a, a great friend of mine and is a long-term collaborator with me. Um, Peter um, has written music that features on both Volume 1 and Volume 2 of, of Celtic Collection and on this first volume um, the earlier piece of the two I'm going to record um, is featured. The piece is called uh, Primrose Mount and it's, um, it's a kind of a lilting kind of a dance I would almost say um, with a kind of unusually dark middle section but it's an extremely beautiful tune um, and Peter knows very well how to show off great colour and great uh, body of sound in the guitar. Matthew and I have been working together for a few years now. First on the album Bidla, then French Collection, and now Celtic Collection Volume 1. We've developed a workflow where we edit each piece right after recording it. This way, not only the ideas we get while recording the pieces stay fresh in our minds, but also we are able to capture the atmosphere that the artist created while playing, the moment we come to the editing process. Matthew is playing a beautiful spruced-up guitar built by Scottish luthier Michael Ritchie. It has a very open, rich sound and is well balanced across the entire fretboard. Spruced-up guitars generally offer a wider palette of different sounds, different colors. They have a less uniform sound, which can sometimes make them harder to record than cedar-top guitars. In my opinion, sound is everything to this type of music, so it was essential for me to try capture all the nuances of Matthew's playing and also what the instrument can produce. Our main microphones were two Schoeps CMC6 microphones with white cardioid MK21 capsules. The depth they were able to retain, especially in Neil Gau's Lament, where the last two strings of the guitar are tuned to the low C and G, is just incredible, I think. In addition, to make the sound even more open and three-dimensional, I used another microphone pair positioned a little bit higher up from the floor, and it was two Octava MK12 microphones with custom MJE K47 capsules. Perhaps the most unusual arrangement on the on the album is Toro Takamitsu's arrangement of Danny Boy or the Derriere. Uh, this you have to hear it really um, to to really understand what what I'm saying. But Takamitsu's approach to arranging music is always a little unusual, and he substitutes a lot of what you would consider normal harmony, especially for something like this, a folk lyric song, folk music, and he substitutes. <laughs> more traditional chord progressions to sort of back up the melody with really uh, ambitious and exotic choices of chords. So it's very jazz-like at times, um, it's very slow, very very sedate um, and extremely beautiful um, and I think it's last on the, on the whole of this first volume um, just to finish the recording in this really gentle and very kind of dark mood. It's very very beautiful. <laughs> 